we got another Dre McRae update. She just updated everybody about Vaughn's journey. Now, I do want to make this crystal clear at the beginning of this video. If you don't like Dre, click off this video. Don't take the time to leave hate in the comments below. You don't have to like the girl. You're not forced to watch. I've read a lot of comments every time I post about her, and I think it's insane to me where I'm talking about how she was harassed and bullied, and here they come in the comments. Very telling on who you are, not who she is. You're telling off on yourself because this lady is showing us what it's like to stand by somebody who is struggling mentally, physically, emotionally. That right there is commendable to me. I'm sorry. I think it is. She's went through a lot, a lot. And the fact that she is so strong in her faith and can be positive that's powerful, man. That right there is more powerful than not. The girl had random faceless trolls on the internet call police departments, CPS, and adult protective services, all which opened an investigation, all which investigated Dre, all came to the conclusion that she's done nothing illegal. So she was cleared on every investigation, every single one. That also speaks volumes to me. I, for one, am not the one to just kick somebody when they're down and just crap talk somebody. I don't like that, okay? That ain't me and that ain't this channel. So if that's you, then go on somewhere else. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you, but it ain't happening here, baby, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna let Dre give you the update. For real, but like, I feel like legit people need to know this, like in all seriousness. Whenever me and my family are talking and we're talking about like really serious stuff, we will say code red. It's just indicating like I'm over here dancing and happy and whatever, but code red, it is about something serious. I don't know where to start. Like, because if you're just watching, you're gonna be very, very confused. So I will give the update now. And then anybody who hasn't been here and doesn't know anything about anything, I will fill you in a little bit at the end, okay? Okay. Yesterday, I had a meeting at the hospital. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were seven people total. Five medical professionals were in my husband's room because first, my man's gonna be coming home. The only reason, which is another thing that, you know, people thought, how could she put her man in a care home? How, how is he in a nursing home? That was literally what you were supposed to think and feel about me, you know? Because any mother that could see what her son and her um, daughter-in-law are doing for the sake of Vaughn's health like that is a reason to rejoice and not cause more hardships on the family that is what you you don't add to people's plates of people who are already struggling that is something that you don't want to sow because you will reap don't do that anyways so of course, I want my husband home. The only reason why he was in a care home was because I'm not from here. Tucson is not my city, bro. I come from Yuma. When my husband was flown out from Yuma to Tucson, grabbed my children, my dogs, and I left. And my RV. It wasn't immediately, immediately, but eventually I had to go get it. So while we're here, give me one second. Okay, so... My RV was not a place for Vaughn to be. He's in the, he, he's bed bound. He has a trach, which a whole hole through his, like that trach is like that. 
You know, that's where his airway is from. Now, he's not on oxygen. He's not on a ventilator. That man is strong, okay? That man is strong. He's at a care home because I didn't have a home. Then when he was abused at the care home and he almost lost his life, he went to the hospital, which he is there now. And tomorrow, it will be one entire month in the hospital. And his health continues to decline there. Eventually, I will talk about all the things that he has gone through at the hospital. All the things that I've gone through. But not right now. Right now, I told the people at the hospital, my goal is to find a house I can bring my husband home to. That's my goal. That's my ultimate, that's always been, I would never, I would never intentionally like, oh, you know what? No, I don't wanna take care of my man, put him in a house. Put him in a home, somebody else, absolutely not. And I'm not saying it's bad if other people do it. That's just not me. I would never. And, and anybody who know, anybody who's watched me would know that. Even people that don't like me know that. The only people that would say otherwise are people that have never watched me. And it shows. And it shows. So, when I got a house, they weren't like, oh, let's send him home. It was a whole lot of other things. And so, all the things that we've been through has been like, bro, <laughs> draining, draining to say the least. Finally, yesterday, we had a meeting in Vaughn's room with five different medical professionals. And I was told that in that meeting, we are gonna go over discharge for Vaughn so he can come home. For about the first 30 minutes of the conversation, most of it was about the doctors wanting to let me know that they believe that um, Vaughn is gonna pass. The first 30 minutes of it. So while I'm there, like making progress, you know, I went to Harbor Freight, which I'm saying it wrong before. In, before it was saying Harbor Freight. It's not Freight. It's Freight. So I went to Harbor Freight and I was like, bro, give me a tool shed. Like I want, my baby got medical supplies. Okay, come with me. Let me show you said medical supplies. <laughs> like, bro, I got, okay, I got, I got things for my baby, okay, like I got stuff that I need to organize, his medication, his box stuff, I got his bed, like there are things I need to put together, but his medical supplies, I mean, it's a lot, so I wanna make sure when my man gets here, anything he needs, oh, it's in that drawer, it's over here, it's there, I don't wanna be pulling nothing out of boxes, out of bags, cause I don't want him to want for anything, and I don't want to mess up as his caregiver, okay? I wanna be the best of the best, you know, for my baby, nothing less. So I got a generator, I got a tool shed to put all the medical supplies, and then I go take off to the meeting. And for 30 minutes, it is about how he has a blood, in, he has an infection, he's septic, and he's not gonna, you know? and that he's gonna. And so while the doctors are telling me, I'm like, okay. Like, I'm receiving the information, okay. But you're not gonna see, oh no, oh my God, oh no, no. Thank you for telling me. Your, like their job is to inform family members, him, which he, they can't inform him because he won't be able to speak back, but they can inform me and then with that, then we can move forward. So thank you, I received the information. Now let's go back to talking about what we came here for, which is him leaving. Because in no way, shape or form, am I going to accept that outcome? No. 
He didn't go in with the blood infection. Oh no, he went in for severe dehydration. But I knew the longer he stays in that hospital, the more vulnerable and susceptible he is to infections and that's exactly what happened. He's been on antibiotics for a long time now, over a week and his white blood cell count, white blood cell count kept rising. So yesterday they wanted to tell me he's septic. He's not gonna, he's gonna. And I'm like, they're saying it in many different ways just so that I understand. But you don't, I don't need to hear like five different times in order for me to understand. I understood it the first time. Just because I'm not over here crying or just because I'm like, oh no, or now I'm making plans for his DEA, TH, that, that, no, that's, I'm not making plans because we didn't come this far just to come this far. This is not the end of the road for my baby. That, absolutely not. I re what? No, no. So after like five times, I'm like, okay, I was under... The assumption that this meeting was so we could go over how to get my husband discharged so he can come home. So if it was about anything else, I was not made aware. And after I said that, then finally, we went on to talk about how to get him home. I don't believe he's septic, absolutely not. I believe a white blood cell count can raise for many reasons, okay? Many reasons. And then sometime in the conversation, cause my mom was there and I'm glad because she saw that we are a united front. Does the sound keep coming out for every, anyone? I can hold it. I can hold the phone in case it's, yeah. Let's do, let's do, yeah. So obviously infections are serious. Obviously being septic is serious. Like I, I, I'm not saying it's not. I just want y'all to know because although I, okay, he has an infection, he has, okay, septic, telling me he's been on two different antibiotics, it's not working, we're going to have to add another, uh, okay, okay, add another one, let's keep it moving. I'm in there with the, an infection, he got one while he was there. So, you know, mom was like, listen, we know, we, we know the severity of everything and we take care of our own she starts naming the different people that were in our family that ended up passing at home with family you know so number one if my husband is going to be septic if he is going to blankety blank Okay, that, that, first of all, we're not even going there. I don't even want to say if, because no, there ain't no if. So all the people that are like, you, you want to leave him at the hospital if he's septic. You want to, like, listen to my story first before trying to, trying to give your input, okay? No, it would be idiotic to bring him home if he has an infection, okay? Let's, let's just say that, because I feel like whenever people hear one thing, they think it equates to this. No, I ain't trying to bring my husband home while he's septic. If, he, if he's septic, bye. That's not what I'm saying. Listen a little louder, okay? Listen a little better so that, boom, okay? Because that ain't happening, no. What I'm saying is that, no, he is not going to be septic. That infection is going to go away. And when you clear that infection, then he's going to come home. What they don't want to do is talk about Okay, how do we get him home after the infection is gone? They didn't want to do that because they wanted to focus and all of our energy on the infection, the infection. Oh my God, he's not going to make it. I fear he's going to pass. And I mean, that was repeated and not just by one person. Like that's collective. So it's like, mm, that's not happening. No. White blood cell white blood cell count kept going higher and higher. I ain't tell my children. I ain't tell Slay Mafia. I ain't tell no. I told like three people and that was it. 
just because it's like, bro, this is what they're doing, but I read, this is what they said, but I rebuke all of that. I do not accept it. No, his infection is going to go away and that man is going to come home. So that, that is what my, my whole intentions of talking about him being at home because no, no, I don't accept it. But yesterday it was just like, choo, choo, choo. oh my gosh. At first, it was a little bit weird in the meeting, but I feel like all of the questions, all the things that we talked about, I feel like that doctor could see that I mean business. I'm not just some, I want my family to be together, kumbaya, let's bring us all together and let's just be together in one house. And then when he gets here, I leave him alone and just don't, don't mess with him, don't take care. That's not gonna happen. And I feel like the doctor was able, because it's a new doctor every week. They, they don't keep the same doctors on. So I feel like as the conversation went on, this doctor got to see how I was. People are against him being alive than people that are for it. And that's pretty, that's pretty sad. And I don't like that. But I really like the doctor that he has now because he called me to let me know that his white blood cell count reduced by half. And I was like, yes! And I screamed while I was on the phone. And he was like, yeah, you know, I think he was really dehydrated. And I told him yesterday that he cannot be dehydrated. Like, he came in because of severe dehydration. And he's having issues with his stomach, he's, at, he's having issues with a lot of things. But what I know he needs is fluids. So this doctor finally increased the fluids and then at night he gave him more. When I went there yesterday, Vaughn's heart rate was 122. He's tachycardic, he's obviously stressed. Do you know what it was today when the doctor called me? 88. infection is leaving my man is doing good oh he bro what his heart rate is calm what his infections out of 15 what like this is crazy i'm so happy i'm so like yes so although no he's not coming home today it's a step in the right direction at least it's not Oh, he's gonna lose his life. No, the doctor was like, all good reports. They're gonna try to switch out his peg tube to something better, so I'm gonna be heading to the hospital so that I could be there for the procedure. Like, I'm just, <laughs> Now, he don't look tired at all. He looks bright-eyed, bushy tail, ready to, ready to get wheeled out of there. <laughs> he has his soulmate by his side fighting. Yes, yes. I'm so, I'm grateful. We, he lives to see another day. And he doesn't have someone by his side that just accepts the doom and, uh, how do you say, doom and gloom. I don't accept doom and gloom. Nope. I know how powerful our God is. And I know how powerful we were created. And I know that Vaughn's body is powerful. He was supposed to be on a ventilator for the rest of his life, not supposed to do anything. That man moves his head on his own. He's able to open. He bats his eyelashes at me, like, like for real, for real. He will at me, and he does that every time I'm about to leave. I don't know if he's trying to like stay, stay, or he's doing, you know. It's just exciting. It's exciting. This is a big, big milestone. This tells me Vaughn ain't done yet. Mm -mm. Vaughn is not done. Vaughn is not done. He wants to keep fighting. He wants to keep going. Well, let me go over there and let him know <laughs> that as long as he does that, then I will do it too. But if the man wants his dignity to be able to say, I'm not, I can't, then I will be there to support him too. But as long as he has breath in his body and he keeps 
pushing and man, my man's chilling at 88 heart rate. Oh, what? What? He's at 88. What? What? I'm so happy. <laughs> it's only because of what I've been through. Do y'all see how the internet did me? People that don't even know me. People are cray cray, like legit. And, and it's not in a let's laugh about it way. It's it's scary. The the power that people have when they speak lies and everybody just eats it all up. It's just crazy. But anyways, can you imagine what Vaughn's future would have been like if he wasn't with me? Y'all just wait a minute. Think about Vaughn with anybody else. Do you think he would still be here? Do you think he would still be fighting? Because I know without a doubt he wouldn't. Without a doubt he wouldn't. But he has someone cheering him on as hard as I do. You better believe. I got, I got his back. I'm supporting him. We in this. Okay? Go follow Dre on social media. I follow her on Facebook. That's where I see all of her lives and her posts that she makes. So if you are on Facebook... Go follow Slay with Dre McRae. I had it linked or whatever at the bottom of the video. So you could go type it in and look her up. She's super easy to find. Give her a chance. I mean, at some point in time, people need to come to the realization that people on the internet, some people on the internet, will go to the extremes just because they don't like somebody. Just because they're unhappy, they might be jealous of their attention they might be receiving on the internet because they might get support and say the other person jealous of them ain't getting the support or the attention that they getting and maybe they get jealous. Some people will go to links, let me tell you. I like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt to show me who they are. And right now, I can appreciate that Dre talks so openly about her faith and how much she loves God, how supportive she is, how positive she is, despite the amount of pure chaos and pure negative BS that she's being handed left and right. She chooses to be positive, upbeat, and hey... I see nothing wrong with that, okay? I, I see nothing wrong with it. Now, I will have more Dre McRae updates in the future, so stay tuned. Like and share this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions. Smash that subscribe button if you have not already. Click that bell beside subscribe to all. That way you'll be notified whenever YouTube sends out notifications. I love you so much for watching. I will see y'all in my next video.